Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial on image based lighting with LifeFX. In this tutorial we are looking at remote workflows with LifeFX. But let me first explain how we got here. In a perfect world LifeFX Studio will drive the LED volume as well as the image based lighting. In those cases you can hook up a lighting console to LifeFX remote controlling all lighting features while the LifeFX operator at the machine takes care of the projection mapping for the LED volume. This is entirely possible but not always feasible due to system performance, particular setup choices or job roles spread over a number of people on stage. In these scenarios LifeFX can be used purely for IBL on a separate system independent of what is driving the LED volume. There are basically two workflows for this. First LifeFX receives a live stream from the media server driving the LED volume. This can come in the form of an SDI or NDI signal but LifeFX also supports Spout, Siphon and Unreal Engine texture sharing for direct latency free texture sharing in case LifeFX and the media server reside on one and the same machine. So essentially in this workflow LifeFX will do image based lighting based on an incoming image stream instead of getting frames from a clip on disk. The other workflow is using two LifeFX systems with plate playback. One system is driving the LED volume playing back clips from disk. The other system has the exact same clips loaded and is linked to the first system using LifeFX's sync players feature. If we add Nvidia's Quadro sync cards into the mix we can make sure both systems are 100% frame locked when playing out the content. Let's look at workflow number one. In our example here we will be receiving a live stream via SDI from another media server. In LifeFX we first need to configure our video I.O. Supported is any hardware from AJA, Blackmagic and Bluefish444. On the startup screen on the far left go to video I.O. settings and select your capture device of choice. LifeFX ships with a virtual NDI I.O. device which provides 4 inputs and 4 outputs. I'll use this for demonstration purposes. Enable it up here and also enable at least one input channel down here to capture from. In the case of NDI we also have to select the stream on the network that should go into this channel. The input resolution will be auto detected from the incoming signal. The resolutions and frame rates up here are purely for outputting. Over here we can already see a preview of the incoming image signal. In our case from Unreal. Having everything configured we can exit out of the video I.O. settings and enter into our project. Now instead of importing a clip from disk we will start a live setup through the button right next to it. Since we do not intend to do any green screen compositing today we'll leave the first drop down to basic capture. Give our setup a name and select NDI channel number 5 which carries the feed from Unreal. We can leave the resolution as is, it will anyhow adjust to the resolution of the incoming NDI feed. We also do not need to specify any camera profile or tracker and can right away click the create button. This will by default throw us into the live effects tab where we can start to color grade and composite on the incoming NDI feed. However nothing stops us from simply switching to the stage lights tab in order to set up our lighting config and proceed as usual. The only thing that is different in this scenario is storing different setups for different scenes. With clips on disk it's simple, we store the setup with each clip. With an incoming live stream that can also be made work by simply creating multiple live capture setups here in the construct. However there's also an alternative way of doing it by simply using versions. This will essentially duplicate our live capture setup and with this setting here enabled whatever we configure will be stored per shot instead of globally. So let me quickly rearrange my sample boxes here and switch back and forth between the two versions. Of course we can also color grade both versions separately. Like this. On to the second workflow using two LifeFX systems with plate playback. We have loaded the same 360 footage in the same order onto both systems. On the first system we are using the footage to project it correctly onto an LED volume using the projection setup and the stage manager. 
On the other system, we are looking at the full equirectangular image of the source clips with the entire 360 degrees. This will enable us to map stage lights onto content that is not shown on the LED wall, but would theoretically appear to the left and right, above and in front of the talent in front of the wall, to accurately simulate light effects and reflections. Now all we have to do is link the two systems so they always play in sync. Let's start on the first system. The first thing to do, since we have multiple clips we want to shoot, is to set the player mode to timeline. While the resolution might differ between the two systems, it is important that the frame rate of the timeline and, if applicable, our video I.O. match between both systems. The timeline setting is important since otherwise we always enter the Live FX tab with a single shot and cannot easily jump to the next shot. Next, we can simply enter the Live FX tab with any of the clips. If we want to restrict playback to one of the clips, we can simply push the range button over here and now only play the current clip. Clicking the button again returns to the full mini timeline where we can jump to the next clip. Now to start syncing the two systems, we go to the top menu bar, tools drop down and open the sync players window. Simply hit start master mode and now the system that drives the LED volume is the master. On the second system we also set the player mode to timeline and make sure we have set the same frame rate as on the master system. Next we enter into the stage lights tab, open the same dialog from the top menu bar, select the master system and hit start client mode. That's it, both systems are now linked together and the system we use for controlling the stage lighting always follows the master system running the LED volume. If we hit pause on the master system, the client system will pause too. If we scrub to a specific position on the master system, the client system will do so as well and so on. Now, the playhead between two systems is synced, but that doesn't necessarily mean their output is absolutely 100% frame locked. In most cases, that is not even necessary, since a 1 to 2 frames difference between the two systems isn't noticeable at all, or might even be wanted since the image pipeline from the master system to the wall might add 1 to 2 frames of delay anyways. However, if the content is very volatile with extreme effects like for instance thunder and lightning and other kinds of bright flashes, you might consider setting up frame lock using Nvidia's Quadro Sync 2 cards for a more robust synchronization between the two systems. To learn more about how to set up Quadro Sync 2 cards and frame locking, please see the link in the description. Once set up in the NVIDIA driver, LiveFX will automatically recognize the Quadro Sync settings. Of course, we can still dial in an offset to the master system to better sync up the stage light effects with the content shown on the LED volume. And with that, we can proceed as usual with our stage lighting setup. That's it for this tutorial, see you on the next one. Bye.